Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm trying to like figure out like a cute place for me to like sit down and film videos in my new house. Um, oh my God, it's snowing out. <laughs> I don't have everything set up yet. Like I hope to one day have like a cute little area upstairs or in like the office, which right now is just like Christmas presents everywhere. So bear with me while I try to figure it out. Oh, I forgot to put my rings on. Um, I just love my rings on guys. Um, this is a very like just chill. I don't wear, I'm not wearing makeup. This is just like gonna be a sit down video. By the time you see it, I will have a title figured out. I don't know like what to call this. Um, I just kind of want to talk about all the things that like I wish I knew before starting IVF. Like what I wish somebody would have told me before starting this whole journey. If you're new to my channel, just finding it now. My husband and I have been married for two years. We've been trying to have a baby for five. Um, May of 2018, we started IVF and now it is December 2019 and still no baby. We have had one, two, four egg retrievals. I feel like I'm listing like the 12 days of Christmas and a partridge in a pear tree. Um, four egg retrievals. We've had one, two, four transfers. First transfer didn't work. Second transfer worked, miscarriage. Third transfer worked, miscarriage. Fourth transfer, we transferred two embryos. One didn't work, one worked, and then a miscarriage. So we've been through a lot. Um, I'm not even sure when I'm ready to do another round because I'm just not emotionally there. My plan was to do my next egg retrieval, not with my next cycle at the end of December, but like my next, the cycle after that, the end of January. I'm just not sure if I'm there yet. Um, I don't wanna cry in this video. I just kinda of wanna tell you guys, if you're going through this and you need some like guidance on like, before you start IVF, maybe you're, a little bit into your journey and hopefully this video gives you comfort. I don't know. I don't want to feel like I'm coming off negative in this video um, because like some of the things I'm going to say are kind of like, like if I'll, I'll get into it, but please know that I'm not being negative. I'm just trying to get out like what I wish I knew before doing this. Okay. So I have like a list here. It's quite long. The first thing I wish I knew before starting this was it will not take one time. If you're, some of you, you might be very lucky that your first round of IVF works and you're golden. Unfortunately, through my experience and through the Facebook groups that I've been in and people that I've met on social media, unfortunately, nobody in my real life has gone through this, but I have met a lot of great people um, through social media, through YouTube, through Instagram going through this and I know like a handful of people that like the first time works for them. Unfortunately, that's not the case. I went into this, so our first round, we paid out of pocket and I was like, yes, we're finally there. Because you know, after like, how many years are we trying? Three and a half, four years? Like you finally get to IVF and you're like, finally I'm gonna have my baby. And it's like, this, the universe is like, ha, not like, good luck girl. Um, so clearly like my mentality was just like, this is it. This is going to work. I'm so excited. And then I ovulated early and I was like, are you effing kidding me? Like how, like why? <laughs> and so then with that same doctor was really nice and gave us like a discount for a second round because we were paying out of pocket. And unfortunately that didn't work. So you have to be prepared that it's going to take more than one time. Like you might have, like it might take two or three times to figure out like how to get you your baby or in my case, it might take you a bajillion times. Um, not every single person is like me where, I don't know, I don't know why this isn't happening for me. Sometimes I'm like, can I handle another thing? And it just comes at me. So be fully prepared that your first round of IVF might not work, which brings me into like another thing. Like the doctors might not know like your official like 
di diagnosis of like what's wrong into like figuring out more things. Like when I went into my first round, my diagnosis was unexplained infertility. Um, but with the thought that I have a lot of scar tissue inside because my appendix ruptured when I was four and the way I explained to the doctor how bad it was, he was like, wow, like you, your insides are probably full of scar tissue and your egg probably isn't getting to the fallopian tube. Um, at that time, the doctor didn't want to do a laparoscopy, one, because he said that it would probably mess up more because of the amount of scar tissue he thinks I have, and two, I would have had to pay out of pocket for it. And then this new doctor, she fully agreed about the scar tissue issue and only wanted to do a laparoscopy if I was interested in knowing if that was like for real, but it wouldn't have like solved anything. So I was like, you know what, it is what it is. If I'm staying at unexplained infertility, that's fine. So the first doctor, my AMH was not low. But then when I got to the second doctor, my AMH levels were lower. So now my diagnosis is low ovarian reserve. And now even finding out more, like cause the third egg retrieval, I ovulated early again. So I've got some kind of ovarian dysfunction. Um, and what else is my diagnosis? So with further testing, I also have the MTHFR gene mutation because like they don't test you for everything right away. You have to have a few losses to test for more things. Well, maybe for insurance to cover it, but I didn't get like genetic testing, my karyotype testing, I didn't get any of that until after multiple losses. So unfortunately, like you might not find out like what's really wrong after for a while, which kind of sucks. And another thing that I wish I knew is that like your medication and your protocol might change. Like even like during stims, like they might be like, actually you need more Menopure. And with my first round, Medicaid Menopure was not covered by insurance. So that was an extra like $900 out of pocket. The second time as well, it's like, they're like, let's, we're gonna, but the second time they, they um, warned me, they said like, you're gonna, we're gonna wanna put you on Menopure again. So get that beforehand. So I got it. It's just, oh, it's a lot. <laughs> um, let's see what I've covered so far. All right, it won't work the first time. Well, it might not work the first time. Again, this is where I think that like, I don't wanna come off negative, but you have to be prepared that it might not work the very first time. Um, you will find out more about why you haven't gotten pregnant along the way, like your diagnosis might change, the blood test results might change, all of those, like they might find out more with further testing, your medications will change, your protocol will change. Every single time, almost my protocol has been a little different. They have added a medication, they've taken away a medication. Um, with my last round, we took the HCG shot weekly after the transfer to hope that that helped. It didn't help. <laughs> um, so the emotional aspect of IVF, like yes, you go into it thinking because of all of your infertility so far, it's gonna be rough. But you don't fully understand it until you're in a round. So waiting, so you have to go in every other morning or towards the end every morning to get an ultrasound or blood work. And then you have to wait for like, to, then you have to wait for like the afternoon call or message to let you know like how things are looking. And then like, mine have never, I never had a cycle canceled because of like what things, like how things look, but I've had like a call like, oh, you only have four measurable follicles. Um, we're not sure right now if we're gonna continue the medication or have you do the egg retrieval early, blah, blah, blah. Like things like that. Like you might think that you're gonna get 12 follicles and end up with like four. <laughs> it sucks. Like, and then once you fertilize your eggs, you have to wait for those phone calls. So some clinics do it like they call you day one for the fertilization report and then day five to let you know like what you have to like transfer or freeze. But my doctor let us know an update on day one, day three and day five. And to top it off, it wasn't just like a clean cut, like phone call. Like I had one egg fertilized beautifully the first day. And then I had like another one catch up the next day. And then that second day I learned that another egg matured overnight. Like, it's just like, I had an email every single day and I was like on edge every single day. Your emotions and your anxiety are gonna be tested to the extreme because and if you're an anxious person like myself, it just sends you over the edge. Be prepared emotionally 
for the roller coaster ride and for the anxiety of it all because I can't even explain it. I didn't even think it was, even like for the next round, I'm not gonna be prepared for the emotional stress and anxiety of it all because this is, it's the one thing that you're like dying for that you're supposed to be able to do naturally and it's, I don't know, I, I'd love to know like why this doesn't work. Like I can't, I can't, I don't wanna start crying. But anyway, be prepared emotionally and your nerves for all of the fun joys of IVF. There, like I said before, there's gonna be unexpected costs. Um, even if, like my insurance covers it, but like for freezing the eggs, insurance doesn't cover that. Um, the, PGS text, the PGS testing, which I think we're doing the next round, is not covered because Rob and I, every insurance is different. So make sure you call your insurance and ask them what's covered, what's not covered. Because even with my first round of IVF where the IVF part wasn't covered, the medication was covered, which was really nice. Um, but like the freezing of the eggs, the PGS testing, um, if a medication might not be covered because insurance might say that like there's another medication that you should be using, but your doctor thinks that, like there's gonna be a ton of unexpected costs. So be prepared for that. And my last one, those two pink lines do not mean it worked. I, this is again, I don't want to sound negative, but the first time I saw those two pink lines, I was like, oh my God, finally, finally, I'm gonna have my baby. Eh, not gonna happen. Second time, I was more like, okay, we'll see, like, I hope this is it. And by the third time, I was just like, when is this gonna end? I just know it, I know this is it. Like. Every day I woke up, every time I went to the bathroom, I was checking for blood. It was, I still check for blood and I know that like I'm not, every time I go to the bathroom and I wipe, I'm checking for blood. And I'm not even in a round, I'm not even over near pregnant, like it's just, the things that IVF does to you mentally, it's crazy. I, I hope that whoever's watching this and if you're going into IVF, I hope it's an easy ride for you because if it's not, uh, I don't even have words to like tell you how hard it's been. I cry almost every single day because something triggers me. I used to be, IVF takes a lot out of you, like your spirit, your mood. I used to be so positive. I used to be so, I'm gonna be a mom and I'm starting to think like, this might not happen. And I know I need to get out of this negative spot because I can't go into a round. This is why I'm do I don't wanna like jump right into doing another round of IVF because I need to get out of this negative, not positive mindset or else it's never gonna work. <sighs> I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wish I knew before starting IVF. I think that's it guys if you're going through this please leave a comment down below let me know where you're at I could not have gone through this with some of the people that I've met through Instagram Facebook and in and YouTube um, because you need to have a support system of some kind unfortunately I don't have like any close friends that have gone through this my sister-in-law did do IVF but it worked the first time for her so it's I don't feel like we're on the same level anymore. Um, so you have to have something. I have you, you need to have a partner that's gonna be supportive and be there for you no matter what. I would not have gotten through any of this if Rob wasn't so amazing. Um, if I didn't think I married the right person beforehand, I know for 100%, 120,000% that I did now because if you don't have like that person for you, you can't do this. It's just, it's just impossible. My friends try to be there for me, but they all have kids, they've all had them easy. So it's just like, they have no idea what it's like. So I don't really confide in them, but they would listen to me if I needed them to. But I just feel like they just don't understand. You know what I mean? So also make sure that like you have your person and if therapy is an option for you, maybe get into some therapy. I just haven't found the right therapist yet. Um, the last one I went to, she was kind of just like, I don't know, we just didn't have a connection and I'm on the hunt right now for another one that specializes in 
lost, but unfortunately a lot of them are like, we only have daytime hours, or we are out of network, we don't accept insurance, it's $175 a session. <laughs> Who can afford that? So I'm like, I'm trying to find a way out of the negative spot that I'm in. I don't know what kind of, <laughs> if you're watching this, I'm sorry, this video isn't what you expected. I didn't expect to go on a rant about that either. But I wish everybody going through IVF, infertility, IUI, multiple miscarriages, I my heart hurts for you. My heart goes out to you. I pray that you get your happy ending because everybody you're going through this just wants the same thing. They just want to be a mom. They just want to have a family. However you get there, I hope that it works for you guys. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.